Hello and welcome back to Bookish and welcome to Tag Tuesday. Today I'm going to do the W is for Writers tag. This is the latest in Sean the Book Maniac's Alphabet Soup uh, series of tags in which he takes one letter from the alphabet and he comes up with prompts uh, related to books and books you may have on your shelf and books you may want to read uh, that have to do with that letter. I think he chose a challenging uh, letter this time. He chose the letter W. Uh, so, W is for Writer. Prompt number one says uh, to name a writer that you know, that you've met, uh, that you hope to meet uh, sometime or, or that you've seen in real life. This is really hard for me. I don't go to uh, author events probably just because uh, of the awkwardness, I think, of, of meeting an author. I think somebody else has talked about this, but I have no idea. Uh, what I would say other than, you know, something along the line, oh, I love your work, and uh, uh, it just seems awkward, and, and I just, just not my scene, but I have met two uh, authors, I guess. Uh, one is the historian H.W. Brands, uh, who was at a uh, teacher seminar uh, that I attended uh, many years ago. I believe uh, he had just published a biography of Benjamin Franklin at the time. And then I also uh, met Jimmy Carter. Uh, he came and gave a speech uh, where I went to uh, college and I just kind of got to like uh, meet him, be in the same room with him. And he writes uh, as well as being, you know, the greatest ex-president in the history of the United States. His presidency might not have been so great, but I don't know anybody who's done more uh, for humanity with the job of a uh, former president than he is. Prompt number two is W is for War. Name the last great war book you've read. Um, let's. Oh, by the way, H.W. Brand's name has a W in it. Uh, so the last great war book I read was, uh, let's see, Drew Gilpin Faust, uh, This Republic of Suffering uh, was the last great uh, war book I read. Um, which is essentially, uh, and I've talked about it before, I reviewed it on my channel, essentially a book about the impact uh, the Civil War had on Americans' ideas about death, grieving, funerals, uh, etc. And I thought that was great. I also, though, want to read what I know is a great uh, war book because it was written by Tim O'Brien, and that's going after Cacciato. Uh, I've read uh, The Things They Carried in the Lake of the Woods, uh, but not that book, and so I want to do that. Uh, prompt number three is uh, www.writer.com. Uh, a writer uh, you recommend or want to read um, um, or want to start, uh, whose name starts with a W. Uh, so Colson Whitehead is my, is my go-to right here, author of The Underground Railroad and The Nickel Boys, uh, two really great books uh, back to back. I'd like to read more of his in terms of a classic um, uh, classic American uh, authors, I would go with Richard Wright. Um, I know a lot of people have read, uh, seems like a lot more people read Black Boy uh, by Richard Wright, which is kind of a fictionalized memoir, I think, of his life. But I really like Native Son, uh, which kind of, I think, perfectly captures the, uh, the situation that a lot of African Americans found themselves in, uh, in cities uh, in the North, you know, outside the South, in cities in the North. Uh, in the years uh, leading up to the Great Depression during that time period. And then also the American author Walker Percy, uh, author of the uh, once considered American classic, The Movie Goer, which is a book, you know, I, I think more people should read. So there you go. Those are my three authors, and at least one of each of their names uh, begins with a W. Problem number four is W is for Wait and See, an author who you're not ready to read yet. I'm going to go with Sally Rooney. Sorry, there's no W in her name. Uh, but there's just so much talk on book two about Sally Rooney, uh, good and bad, uh, that I just, I don't feel like if I read anything by her that I would be able to, uh, to approach it uh, objectively at this point. So I'm going to wait maybe for the, the stuff about her uh, in the booktube community and the book world uh, to die down a little bit maybe. Maybe if she goes a little while without publishing a book, then I'll pick, pick up one of her books. Prompt number five is W is for what's the title to name a book with at least two W's in the title. And man, uh, this was a stretch, but I did find this book, which I had to read in grad school, called Why the North Won the Civil War. Whew, it was close. I, I really couldn't find very many books on my shelf uh, that had uh, even one W in the title, um, really. Uh, so there you go, Why the North Won the Civil War. That's my book. 
with two titles. It's basically just a, a really thin book of essays by historians suggesting, um, you know, how political, social, economic, uh, and military uh, factors caused the North to win the Civil War. Prompt number six is W is for women to name some great books you've read by women lately. I've read a lot of books by uh, women lately, and they've all been pretty daggum great. Uh, so I read The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison, who is, you know, fabulous. I also just recently finished Sula by Toni Morrison. She's still fabulous and amazing. New to me author Octavia E. Butler, I finished Kindred, which I'll be reviewing soon. Uh, on my channel maybe Thursday. I'll do a review of Kindred on my channel. Uh, really enjoyed this. And then uh, Milkman uh, was one of my first reads in January by Anna Burns. And this really just uh, just knocked my socks off. I liked it a lot. Prompt number seven is word for word to uh, name a book, a word that you found in a book that you read recently that you didn't know that was new to you. Or just to name your favorite word. Unfortunately, none of my favorite words uh, start with W. I couldn't think of one that came from a book, so I just kind of went with words, uh, a couple of words that I say all the time. Uh, one of those is dubious. I like to say dubious as a response to uh, pretty much anything that comes up in life. I, I just say uh, dubious. Um, uh, bastard is my favorite curse word, and I work it into uh, many a sentence and uh, many a discussion. Uh, then two words I don't use a lot, uh, but one which comes to mind a lot is the word pig-eyed. Uh, or the term pig-eyed. It might be two words, Sean. I might be cheating, but there's a certain politician <coughs> uh, who uh, every time I see him, I think the word pig-eyed. But one of my favorite words is, is pettifogging uh, or pettifogging, uh, which uh, is just a word that I learned from, uh, from, from True Grit, uh, from the movie, uh, and I just really like that word. Uh, so there you go. Prompt number eight is W is for weary to name a trope or a style or a situation or a cliche in, in literature that you're tired of. I have to be honest with you, I've never been a fan of dystopian uh, fiction. And so there seems to be just a glut of dystopian stuff out there. Everything seems to be dystopian. And, you know, I understand why the world seems like it's going to hell. Uh, in a handbasket, pretty damn quick, uh, but it just I, it just has almost no appeal to me. So you know, maybe we should have more uh, sunny and happy and optimistic books. Prompt number nine is Whippersnapper to name an author who uh, showed a talent for writing at a really young age. I have two classic American authors uh, here. Uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald uh, published um, This Side of Paradise when he was when he was quite young. Um, and uh, I think his uh, talent for writing sentences uh, was, uh, was in some ways a gift. And not that he didn't work on it. You know, a gift isn't a gift if you don't try to hone it, if you don't make it better, if you don't apply effort. And he certainly did. And then Sylvia Plath would be the other one uh, whose uh, poetry I read some of as a, as a part of the um, Poetry for Beginners series that I did uh, last year. And I still have one more planned video uh, that I want to do if I ever get around to that. Prompt number 10 is W is for uh, Weakest Link to name a book in a series or in an author's oeuvre that you just think is not as good as the others. And so I went with At Last uh, by Edward uh, St. Aubin. This is the fifth in the uh, Patrick Melrose cycle of novels. And while I thought it, it did a good job of just providing some closure, um, it, it lacked the crackle, the sparkle, the, oh, those are terrible words. <laughs> Crackle and sparkle, wow! <laughs> it lacked the uh, the the wit, uh, the acidic wit, the acerbic wit, the the pain, the humor uh, of the other Patrick Melrose novels. If you haven't read the Patrick Melrose novels, I would certainly uh, encourage you to do so. Uh, but uh, this one, which is the last one, I found to be a bit of a letdown. And then prompt 11 is to tag widely. So I'm going to tag as widely as possible. Sean, you're the guy who says, you know, tags are for everybody and we shouldn't have to tag anybody. If you haven't done this excellent tag created by the wonderful, the wondrous, the wily, the wise, the wascally, uh, according to Bugs Bunny, Sean the Book Maniac, then you should definitely do it. Anyway, let me know what you thought about my choices, what you thought about the tag in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you for watching.